Let's talk about invoicing from scratch. We call it invoicing from scratch because when we invoice a particular customer, if we don't have information already related to this invoice in the system, then we're invoicing from scratch. And this information is one of four things. Either we already have a sales quote in the system for this customer, or we have job reimbursable expenses that we're going to bill this customer for, or we have time and expense items we're going to bill this customer for, and the fourth item, we're shipping sales order items and tracking back order items. So if we don't meet any one of those four criteria, we're invoicing from scratch. And you'll find that you're invoicing from scratch most of the time. Now, let's demonstrate this. Let's click on the Tasks pull-down menu and come down to Sales Invoicing. Here on the Sales Invoicing screen, we're simply going to fill out the screen. Let's pull in a customer. Let's invoice Harding Consulting. Next, we're in the Invoice Number field. We want to leave this field blank. Peachtree will assign the next available invoice number when we print this invoice. If you're using Peachtree for the first time and want to begin your numbering sequence, you'll want to assign a number to the first invoice that you print. Peachtree will then track the number sequence from that point forward for you. Next over here is the date field. This will automatically default to the system date on your computer. Here is our bill to address field. Notice it is shaded, which means we cannot edit it. Let's talk about this a little bit more because we see this issue coming up with, with our Peachtree users. Let's click on this magnifying glass and let's go into the Harding Consulting customer record by clicking on the edit button here. Here, within this window, we can see the address section down here. Let's click on this down arrow. You can see that we're allowed only one bill to address, but several up to nine ship to addresses. Oftentimes we see users that need different bill to addresses for the same customer. What we recommend in that case is to set up different customers for each bill to address. So you'd simply come up here and set up a Harding-02 and a Harding-03, etc. Now let's return to the sales invoicing window. Over here is the ship to field. Let's click on this box. Here is our drop ship choice. If this were a drop ship invoice, we would want to check this box. Once again, a drop shipment is where our vendor ships directly to our customer. This tells Peachtree that the inventory will not be flowing through our warehouse. And therefore, Peachtree does not have to track this inventory for this particular invoice. Here we can choose up to nine different ship to addresses that we have set up for this customer or we can manually enter a ship to address here. Here, if they have a PO that they issue to us, a purchase order number, we would enter it here. If we have agreed to certain ship via methods, such as UPS ground, we would indicate that here. The ship date, click on the calendar, and you can choose a ship date. And here are the terms. Terms are grayed out here, but we can edit these terms by clicking here. The terms that come in here are the default terms that are assigned to this customer. If we wanted to change the display terms, we could come here and edit this field. And finally, we can select a sales rep here. This is Mark's account. Next, let's come over here <coughs> and look at the different tabs available within the body of the invoice. 
Here is the sales order tab. Notice it's grayed out because we do not have any sales orders in the system for this customer. If we had sales orders in the system for this customer, then this tab would have been the default tab that comes up first. Instead, the Apply to Sales Order tab is the one that appears first. Let's come down here and look at the Apply Tickets Reimbursable Expenses. Click here and you can see there are no time, expense, or reimbursable transactions applicable to this customer. So because there's nothing here, sales orders, nothing down here, we're invoicing from scratch. So let's prepare an invoice. Let's sell them two gardening books. Notice that's how many we have in inventory. Now, Peachtree calculated the total price based on this unit price number times this quantity. If I want to come down to the next line, I just simply click here and that brings me down to the next line to fill in. Let's now sell them 10 garden primers. Now you can see the peach tree has calculated the total as $200.76. Peach tree has also calculated the sales tax. That's because the sales tax is set up over here for this customer there in Gwinnett County. If we need to change this, so in other words if we were delivering this order to a different county, then we could change it here. We're now ready to print this invoice. We're going to pull it up on the screen so we can look at it before we send it to the printer. Preview. And here's our invoice. We're ready to send this to a customer. This address field here will show up in a window envelope. We can now mail this to the customer and get paid.